Funding for NJ Spotlight News provided by NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of residents and businesses for more than 100 years. PSENG, we make things work for communities. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. This is NJ Spotlight News with Brianna Venosi. Good evening and thanks for joining us on this snowy first day of February. I'm Brianna Venosi. A wild winter storm continues barreling through our area, blanketing the state not with inches but feet of snow. And the worst is yet to come, according to Governor Murphy, who declared a state of emergency Sunday night in preparation for the storm, sending out fleets of road crews, shutting down all mass public transportation, calling on residents to do something we've become all too familiar with during this pandemic, stay home. If you're out and you don't need to be, state officials are asking you to turn around and head back. Snow accumulations are expected to be the highest we've seen in roughly five years, up to 27 inches in some parts of North Jersey. Not even a coronavirus vaccine appointment gives you permission to be out on the roads. All six of the state's vaccine megasites shut down today and will remain closed tomorrow. Appointments, those will be rescheduled, delaying a process already fraught with hurdles. So when can we expect to dig out? Leigh Mishkin has our report. New Jersey under state of emergency. This is a big one. 3,900 pieces of equipment deployed up and down the state. We have been working 24 hours uh, on this storm. We, our crews were in early yesterday. We have 65 pre-positioned towing assets throughout the state to make sure we can quickly address disabled vehicles. The National Weather Service forecasting up to 24 inches in North Jersey, 15 inches in Central Jersey, and 9 inches in South Jersey. Snow totals the state hasn't seen in the last five years. One Jersey City shoveler thanking Mother Nature for business. My hands are warm. I got my little heat packets. Bring it on, snow. As of this morning, Newark Airport had already canceled about 75% of today's flights. Lock the door, sit on the couch, and stay home until further notice. This is a huge storm. New Jersey Transit suspended buses, rail, except ACRL, and access link service system-wide for the entire day. And roads in places like Rahway, Somerville, Bloomfield, and Jefferson were no longer visible by afternoon. It's not easy. Because I'm not a young man anymore. At 11 a.m., Governor Murphy confirmed New Jersey State troopers had already responded to 340 accidents and nearly 300 calls for help. The commercial vehicle travel restriction along our interstate highways that was put in place yesterday, which includes tractor trailers, empty straight CDL weighted trucks, any passenger vehicles, towing trailers, motorcycles, <laughs> recreational vehicles, boats, as we usually uh, want to highlight. That, that order remains in place. And a reminder that this restriction does not apply to the Turnpike Parkway or Atlantic City Expressway. Murphy warning everyone the worst is yet to come. Really beginning now and tonight before this system pushes away from us. We thought originally tomorrow morning it looks increasingly like tomorrow night. We have approximately anywhere between 350 and 400 outages right now. That is normally a blue sky day. But let's not uh, dwell on false hopes here. While you still have power, I encourage you to charge all your devices. In Camden County, spokesperson Dan Keeshan confirming they were expecting the worst through the night. We have about 100 snow plows on the road right now. We're going to be concerned about winds as well. So there will be uh, tree crews uh, at the ready to, to get out and take care of any, any tree blockages, any downed trees that may come through. And we have to remember we are still in the midst of a pandemic. Each of our vaccine mega sites is closed today due to the weather. However, the Bergen County, Burlington County, and Gloucester County sites were already pre-scheduled to be closed today. Anyone with an appointment at the mega sites in Atlanta County, Middlesex County, or Morris County has received a call, an email, or a text from the health care partner at that site to be rescheduled. The Camden County Vaccination Center made the call Saturday to move all 540 of its appointments scheduled for today and tomorrow to Wednesday.
the rescheduling was a, a significant lift for uh, employees, but over the course of a of a 10 hour day, they were able to get everybody over. And Keishan says they'll have a thousand people to vaccinate on February 3rd, but they have capacity to do 2400. So they're prepared to handle the extra slots. Murphy echoing the same for the mega sites. The objective here is to not create a domino uh, effect. So that is our fervent hope. I know the mega sites are all working toward uh, particularly the second shot reliability that I know is on, on a lot of people's minds. And what should have been a slam dunk snow day for all schools. Many, if not most students have a day off today. This winter storm packing a blizzard like punch, reminding us all to prepare for anything. I'm Leah Mishkin for NJ Spotlight News. This is just the beginning. State leaders are warning it'll get worse before it gets better. The northeastern part of New Jersey bearing the brunt of the storm. You heard Leah Mishkin report snow totals will continue accumulating through Tuesday night. Up to two feet expected in some areas. Intense winds and whiteout conditions. Despite what you may be seeing outside your window, meteorologists say this isn't considered a blizzard. At least not yet, and it doesn't look like the storm will meet that criteria. But when will it end, and what should we expect once it does? We turn now to Joseph McKetta, Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Mount Holly. Joe, thanks for a few minutes of your time today. When all is said and done, and we are far from over, what should we expect, and where will we see the biggest impact in the state? Well, right now we're getting snowfall rates of three or four inches an hour in central New Jersey and Somerset County over into Hunterdon County and up into Morris County. And we really think that's going to be the epicenter of the heaviest snow. And by the time everything's done late tonight, we could anywhere over two, over two feet, uh, anywhere between two and three feet in that area. It's just dumping snow in that area right now. When's the last time our area experienced a snowstorm of this magnitude? Oh, it's been several years. I mean, I, it, we can go back to 2009, 2011. We can go back to 2007, certainly back in 1996. Uh, you know, it's, it's not unheard of, but it's certainly, uh, it's certainly a rare event here to get that much snow in such a short period of time. How much concern is there about beach erosion, flooding at the shore? We're talking, of course, about snow accumulation, but flooding is, is big as well. Oh, you're absolutely right, Brianna. I mean, uh, we had uh, moderate flooding at the time of high tide this morning, not only on the ocean front, but on the back bay. And not only that, but we have the strong winds along the coast as well. We, we have gusts up to 50 miles per hour right now in Atlanta County and Cape May County. So um, really, really, it's a, a triple whammy for us right now. Joe, walk me through the science of this, though, because a lot of us, myself included, are sitting here scratching our heads. We just talked about uh, 2020 tying for the second, you know, warmest winter on record, and yet here we are. Yes, it's hard to uh, equate one individual storm with any type of climate change going on, but, you know, you have to kind of step back after a period of time and take a look at the bigger picture. I mean, but it would be uh, remiss of us to say that, you know, something's not happening and something is happening. Uh, we're getting, uh, it seems like we're getting more and more of these storms, uh, uh, that are causing havoc along the beach and, and inland. So, um, you know, it is an issue that we're kind of dealing with and grappling with. And correct me if I'm wrong, though, this is a disturbance within the polar vortex, correct? Usually when we have a polar vortex, we have really the center of the strong, the coldest air coming right down over us. And that's really not what we're seeing right now. I mean, our temperatures right now are cold, but they're not bitter cold. Um, and usually when we have the polar vortex affecting us here in the northeast part of the United States, particularly New Jersey, we're seeing kind of a direct connection to uh, the North Pole or even to Siberia. We're not really seeing that right in this particular instance. We have a dome of really cold air uh, right to our north, which is providing the impetus for the snow. But um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure we would consider this the polar vortex. Is it giving us, Joe, any type of indication of the, the weather patterns ahead for the next um, couple of weeks and throughout the duration of the winter ahead of us? Uh, well, certainly uh, we're in a more active pattern right now. and We actually see something on the horizon that might get us over the weekend, whether or not uh, the same areas get it and whether or not it'll be cold enough for snow. We'll have to wait and see how things pan out. But we're certainly in a more active pattern right now. And um, it looks like for the next week, week and a half, we're going to be in that pattern. Uh, what happens after that, we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting event right now. Joe, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Good luck.
Thank you. The storm complicating an already bumpy rollout for the state's coronavirus vaccine program. Just under 800,000 shots have now been given out. Health leaders are hoping to vaccinate roughly 4.7 million adult residents. Statewide, the number of new positive cases does appear to be stabilizing. Just over 3,100 new confirmed tests reported today, more than 626,000 total with 34 additional deaths and more than 21,000 total lives lost to the this virus. The number of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 dropped below 3,000 this weekend. That's the first time since November. As of today, hospitals are reporting roughly 2,800 patients. The progress comes as medical experts warn highly contagious virus variants threaten to send those numbers surging again, discovering more cases of the strain that originated in the United Kingdom. At least 11 confirmed cases reported statewide. The senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan reports it's now a race between the variants and getting more vaccinations in arms. 80% of the deaths in New Jersey are people over the age of 65. In the face of those frightening statistics, Bill McMichael spent weeks trying to get his 85-year-old mom a timely COVID vaccination appointment, a frantic online scavenger hunt among multiple state, county, and local sites across New Jersey that are hampered by too little vaccine and too many eligible people, he says. You basically opened it up to everyone and their systems could not handle the volume. And they stopped scheduling, right? I don't understand why there is no coordination between the county and the state. Zero, right? Zero. New Jersey's performance actually falls somewhere in the middle of vaccination efforts by states. It's administered some 65 percent of 1.2 million doses received from the federal government. But health expert Michael Osterholm warned the highly infectious UK COVID strain now circulating in New Jersey is like a looming Category 5 hurricane. The surge that is likely to occur with this new variant from England is going to happen in the next 6 to 14 weeks. And if we see that happen, which my 45 years in the trenches tell us we will, we are going to see something like we have not seen yet in this country. Uh, England, for example, is hospitalizing twice as many people as we ever hospitalized at our highest number. In advance of this surge, we need to get as many one doses and as many people over 65 as we possibly can. Certainly the snowstorm does not help the situation today at all. Rutgers Dean Perry Halkita says thousands of appointments postponed today will have to be rescheduled. That, on top of mega sites like Morris County and Rockaway, shutting down over the weekend for lack of vaccine. In this life and death race against the virus, he says, we're not going fast enough. We have to vaccinate a lot more people a lot more quickly. This depends on getting a lot more doses. So yes, it, you're, it is completely uh, a race against time in some ways. We also have to do it quickly because it is quite likely, given the variants that are emerging, that many of us who have already received even some vaccination will need a booster in the future to deal with these actual variants. If I were the czar of vaccines in the United States, yes, I would give people, uh, everybody one dose before thinking about the second dose because you get most of the protection with the first dose. Even if you get COVID, you're not going to the ICU and you're not going to die. Epidemiologist Martin Blazer says it's crucial to stop the virus from spreading because every case gives it another chance to mutate into something more dangerous. The more people who are protected, the less room the virus has to, to change. So it, it is a race. Uh, we we want to try to get people vaccinated as soon as possible. Right now, the supplies are limited, but I think help is, is on the way. Uh, and uh, just, to, just to slow down the viral evolution so that today's vaccine will still be working six months and a year from now. Bill McMichael got his mom an appointment in April which is kind of what it is, but I, I just, I'm just really disappointed that uh, she has to wait so long. I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJ Spotlight News. And once trains, buses, and public transportation are back up and running post-storm, riders will be required to wear masks. Part of the new CDC mandate under the Biden administration aimed at slowing the spread of the coronavirus. The new guidelines take effect at 11.59 p.m. tonight and include anyone traveling into or within the United States, be it by train, plane, taxi, or ferry. 
The rule comes exactly one year to the day since the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a global health emergency. Well, could a pre-pandemic economy be closer than we think? Rhonda Schaffler has the details on new predictions and today's top business stories. Rhonda. Brianna, finally, there's some upbeat news on the economy. A report out today from the Congressional Budget Office is projecting the economy will bounce back strongly this year as COVID-19 vaccines roll out and the impact from the last stimulus package takes hold. But even with this bounce back, the recovery in jobs is going to take longer. Rutgers professor Jim Hughes, Dean Emeritus of the Blaustein School, believes New Jersey won't regain all the jobs lost during the pandemic pandemic until next year or the year after. Remember, it took us until 2015, 2016 to recover the jobs we lost in the 2007, 2009 recession. Uh, so even, even if it were 2023, that would be relatively quick uh, compared to the last downturn. With a new state budget set to be introduced this month, there is a focus on governance in Trenton. Our John Reitmeyer says right now important bills like that multi-billion dollar tax incentive plan are being fast-tracked through the legislature. On top of that, some bills are getting amendments at the last minute, and advocates say there's a need for more public testimony. Concerns about transparency have been raised you know, by liberal groups and by business lobbying groups, groups that don't always agree on policy in Trenton, but have come to an agreement this time that the current practices and, and how governance is taking place needs to, to be fixed. Legislative leaders are vowing to do better. You can get more details on this story at njspotlightnews.org. With more people banking online, fewer are going to their local bank branches. And that's one reason why TD Bank plans to close 81 branches nationwide, including 13 here in New Jersey. The TD branches will close in late April. Now here's a look at stock trading on Wall Street today. I'm Rhonda Schapler, and those are your top business stories. Not one, but two longtime members of the Senate Republican Party are announcing retirement after this term. Minority Leader Tom Kane Jr. will retire from the 21st Legislative District after serving for 20 years in both the Assembly and Senate seats. Kane, the son of former Governor Tom Kane, is rumored to be setting up another bid against Democratic Congressman Tom Malinowski in 2022. Meanwhile, veteran Senator Christopher Kip Bateman will also leave his post in the 16th District district, where he served for nearly three decades in a career known for bipartisan achievements. Before they leave office, there is still work to do. Lawmakers are making yet another attempt at legal marijuana cleanup legislation, advancing a bill in an assembly committee Friday, and it looks a whole lot like the original version. This, as other state legislators, step forward with new proposals. Have they finally found a path forward that'll result in the governor's signature? Senior correspondent David Cruz has the latest. You would think that with an overwhelming mandate from voters last November, it would be easier or at least quicker for lawmakers to get enabling legislation passed. But it's been a torturous path, especially on the social justice front, which is the main reason Governor Murphy and others say they support legalizing. There's a bill that decriminalizes cannabis on the governor's desk, which says... Up to six ounces of, ca of marijuana um, is decriminalized for both adults and youth, meaning that there will be no um, civil or criminal consequences for possessing up to six ounces. But on the other hand, there's a provision that says that any amount of legal cannabis, regulated cannabis that's possessed by uh, people under 21 is going to be subject to disorderly persons charges. And that's a conflict. Language supported by the governor would have downgraded possession by those under 21 to disorderly persons offenses, which many in the legislative black caucus felt would create too many opportunities for interactions between law enforcement and young black and brown kids, which have proven all too volatile in their districts. New language in a so-called cleanup bill that made its way through an assembly committee on Friday downgrades the interaction to a civil offense with a small fine and no arrest or interaction with the court system. 
Assemblyman Benji Wimberly is a sponsor. Instead of, you know, bringing a juvenile in and having a parent come get him, more or less dealing with curbside warnings. No different than you would see down at the shore. If somebody's drinking, you make them pour the, the liquor out on the side. You see a kid somewhere smoking, you know, a kid put the cigarette out, you know, not making it a whole interaction. We have to bring them in. They become part of the system. They're in counseling. The lawmakers we spoke to today said they were still waiting to dig into the details of the Wemberley bill. But Senator Ron Rice, through whose office most of the objections to cannabis legislation have run, said Wimberley's bill is just a starting point, but it settles for warning a kid and maybe calling their parents with no real help to offer them. Not good enough, he says. We don't intend to move anything at this point until we can come back um, and, 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 and say, look, here's what a bill, here's what the bill, here's what the cleanup should really look like. And we think we can do model legislation if we do this right, because if you research the country, you're going to find out none of them are doing anything but just saying, bring the kid in, pick them up, and that's it. And, and, and we just, I can't tolerate that, and I won't tolerate it. I've been in this business too long. That doesn't sound like a man who's ready to help fast-track a bill. The governor has until February 8th to sign the bills on his desk or veto them. Otherwise, what most lawmakers say are imperfect bills will become law, potentially getting a brand new industry off on the wrong foot. I'm David Cruz at J-Spotlight News. One piece of legislation that was finally signed into law takes effect today, dramatically shifting how prisoners leave life behind the wall and re-enter society. The Earn Your Way Out law requires the State Department of Corrections to develop re-entry plans for inmates, both easing their transition into incarceration and out. Corrections officials have had more than a year to prepare for the program, but are they ready? Our senior writer, Colleen O'Day, is here with more. Colleen, when we talk about criminal justice reform, this law really does take a different approach. Yeah, it certainly makes sense that when someone comes into the system, you have them start to focus on getting out of the system. Um, this way, it helps to prioritize whether they do education classes, what kind of you know uh, counseling they may do, other kinds of rehabilitation, um, any work. Um, what's pretty much happened till now is that that hap that waits until kind of towards the end of a person's sentence, you know, more more the last couple months when there's this reentry plan that gets drawn up, um, and that just doesn't make sense because you may have a person who's in there just kind of, you know, aimless, um, whereas this way they're they're really kind of taking charge of their, um, you know, their correctional time and uh, preparing to get out. What role will correctional officers play and the department as a whole? So that's a good question. I mean, the, the department should be the one that is helping to create these plans, working with um, inmates. Um, unfortunately, we've gotten no feedback from the department, so we really have no idea what in fact, they've put in place to now. There had been talk about uh, maybe moving some probation officers over or just creating this new office within the department to kind of oversee this. But we, um, again, we, we don't know yet. Colleen, are you hearing that they're not ready after this year of preparation? And, and quickly, what did they do to prepare then? So, you know, we, we certainly have heard from some of the advocates uh, who are on the outside saying that, in fact, they don't think the department is ready. Um, they did have a year. They knew this was coming. Actually, the, this was pending for even longer than that. Um, so it's really kind of unclear what's been happening. Um, it's often very hard for us to get information out of the Department of Corrections, unfortunately. Yeah, this was, in fact, kicking around the legislature and vetoed by uh, former Governor Chris Christie. All right, Colleen O'Day, we'll be checking back in with you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you, Bree. For more on how the new law will prepare inmates for life outside prison, check out Colleen O'Day's full story on njspotlightnews.org. And that does it for us tonight, but head over to our homepage or check us out on our social channels to continue following all of the stories affecting the state. I'm Brianna Venozzi. For the entire news team, enjoy the snow, stay safe. The members of the New Jersey Education Association making public schools great for every child. RWJ Barnabas Health, let's be healthy together. 
and Orsted, committed to the creation of a new long-term, sustainable, clean energy future for New Jersey. NJM Insurance Company has been serving New Jersey policyholders for more than 100 years. But just who are NJM's policyholders? They're the social service and nonprofit pioneers who lend a helping hand. Science and technology innovators. The men and women who provide our skilled labor. And our homegrown champions. The people who make our state a great place to call home. NJM. We've got New Jersey covered. If you need to see a doctor, RWJ Barnabas Health has two easy ways to do it from anywhere. You can see an urgent care provider 24-7 on any device with our Telemed app. Or use our website to book a virtual visit with an RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group provider or specialist, even as a new patient. You've taken every precaution, and so have we. So don't delay your care any longer. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. The Orsted Vision is a world that runs entirely on green energy. Located off the coast of Atlantic City, Orsted's Ocean Wind Project will provide renewable offshore wind energy. Jobs, educational, supply chain, and economic opportunities for the Garden State. Orsted, committed to the creation of a new, long-term, sustainable clean energy future for New Jersey.